mycorrhizae in a worm farm, and what's a good fishing worm substitute for Canadian night crawlers. We'll get to that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. All right, welcome back, guys. Two interesting topics this week. A YouTube commenter wants a more fungal worm bin, so he's asking if he should add myco, which are mycorrhizal spores, to his worm farm to boost the fungal population. So firstly, we should talk about the distinction between fungal dominant and bacterial dominant worm castings. Food waste and manures tend to produce bacterial dominant worm castings, which are better for many grasses and vegetables. Woodier feedstocks like decomposing wood chips and other high carbon, high cellulose materials tend to allow fungi to flourish, and this produces more fungal worm castings, which are more appropriate for trees and shrubs. This commenter wonders if adding mycorrhizal spores to his worm farm would assist in helping his bin become more fungal. The answer is no. Mycorrhizae, which is kind of an unusual word, isn't really a form of fungi, but rather fungal associations between roots. It's absolutely fascinating how mycorrhizal associations share resources like water and nutrients and actually communicate with one another through the plant roots and through those fungal associations to protect a plant community from pathogens. It's absolutely amazing. Mycorrhizal spores will remain dormant in the soil though until they're woken up by nearby roots to begin building that pretty amazing underground network between plants. So adding mycorrhizal spores to a worm farm would be a fairly expensive and pointless addition since there really aren't roots that need to be connected. But adding mycorrhizae to worm castings or to compost during planting is a great idea though since they're gonna presumably be in the root zone. And back to the worm farm, if you want a more fungal worm farm, I'd suggest using more woody wastes that are very high in carbon, lignin, and cellulose. Think of things like wood chips, leaf mold, and straw, and maybe add more of this stuff to a worm farm to create a habitat where fungi can thrive and begin to attack these wastes. Okay, we're gonna talk about Canadian night crawlers next, but real fast, if you're new to vermicomposting, I wanna send you the worm farm startup guide. Cool little PDF that's gonna help you build a small worm bin like this one to recycle your food scraps. Maybe make some of those uh, bacterial dominant, or if you're adding wood chips, maybe some of those fungal dominant worm castings. And you might just find a nice little discount code in the guide that you can use to get your urban worm bag, worms, or other products a little bit more cheaply. Just click this little link above my left shoulder. It's gonna take you down to the video description where you're gonna be made to click another little link to sign up and get that guide. YouTube is not making this stuff easy on us these days. You can also check the top link in the video description to get that guide as well. Okay, I got a call this week from a bait store owner who bought some of our bulk European night crawlers. We were chatting for a while and he told me that the prices for Canadian night crawlers have gone through the roof. Now, I get hit from both sides when I mention anything that has to do with politics on this channel, and I've probably lost some subscribers over it. But the fact of the matter is that U.S. tariffs on Canadian products are hitting the war market already. And when you buy night crawlers in the U.S., you're more likely than not buying Canadian night crawlers, which is a very muscular, deeply burrowing worm. I use these things growing up all the time in Ohio, fishing for catfish in our inland lakes or fishing for walleye using the Erie Deary lure up at Lake Erie. That brings back memories. There aren't many based and there might not be any uh, U.S. based Canadian night crawler breeders. Uh, so most bait stores are getting their Canadians from Canada. So this guy is telling me that he's seeing prices that are 30 to 50% higher for these worms. So bait shops are stuck with higher prices until we either get rid of the tariffs or we make Canada a 51st state. That's a joke, people. Come on. I know many of you take this stuff way too seriously. All right, so what are the alternatives? One of the nice things about composting worms is that they are much easier to breed than Canadian night crawlers. And if you click this link here, you can see a worm breeding course that I've made available to you guys. The problem with composting worms is that most of them aren't muscular enough to stay on the hook. African night crawlers are the largest composting worm out there. And some of these things can get absolutely massive, but they're not muscular and they're sort of doughy and, and flabby. So if Shane Gillis were a worm, he'd be an African night crawler. The exception when it comes to composting worms is the European night crawler. It's a larger cousin of the really scrawny red wiggler, which is not a good fishing worm, but the European night crawler is. So it's not huge like the African night crawler, but it's muscular enough to stay active on the hook. So to keep the comedian analogy going, if uh, the late model Dave Chappelle that we've seen here in the last few years were an earthworm, he'd be a Euro. Yeah, I know it's kind of weird that Gillis is the African and Chappelle is the Euro, but work with me here. So what's the point with all this? Well, if you're a worm breeder in the U.S. looking for an up-and-coming Canadian night crawler alternative, or, and this is more likely, you're looking for a good dual-purpose worm that's good for composting but that you can also use for fishing, the European night crawler is your best bet. They're about 50% bigger than red wigglers, and they tend to like cooler climates, so your vermicompost should be kept between probably 55 and 90 degrees for these guys to thrive. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please do that now and maybe leave your own question I can get to on a future episode. We'll see you then.